So you wanna grow some flowers, but not sure where to start? Stay tuned because today I'm gonna to share with you seven varieties of annual flowers that you can grow that are really easy, even if you've never grown a flower before. Hi, it's Steph. Welcome back to my channel. I garden in Massachusetts, which is zone 6B. And today I'm gonna to share with you some varieties of annual flowers that I began growing a few years back and that I found to be the easiest plants to grow from seed. And once I show you these varieties, I am certain that you'll be able to grow at least one, if not more, really easily, even if it's your very first try. Now, it's important to note that all of the flowers that I'm gonna show you today are not frost tolerant. These are all annual flowers that do best in warm temperatures or throughout the summer growing season. We will start them in the spring and they will grow in late spring through summer and through fall and they will die back when we have a hard frost. So depending on what your growing zone is, you can do one of two things. You can either start these seeds indoor under grow lights uh, six to eight weeks before your last frost date you can start them through a process called winter sowing, which I have a whole playlist on my channel that I will link here. Or you can wait until your last frost date for your zone has passed and you can plant them outside in the soil directly in your garden. Let's get into it. Starting with one of the most popular and probably the gateway flower for most, the zinnia. Now you may call them zinnias or zinnias, but whatever you call them, we can all agree that they are a beautiful flower. And zinnias come in many different varieties. Some of the varieties that I've tried are the Queen Lime series. Queen Lime series is gorgeous. They have such a beautiful ombre or um, gradient color effect on the bloom, and they have a good size three to four inch bloom, and most of them are frilly in multi petals. Once in a while, you will get one that is a single petal variety, but all very beautiful. Now, zinnias are cut and come again type flowers, which means that the more you cut the flowers, the more blooms the plant will produce. So you can have beautiful blooms to create arrangements or bouquets all season long. Now to cut zinnias, you wanna make sure that when you grab the stem and you shake it, that it's nice and sturdy. If it still has a little bit of flop to it, it is not ready to cut. Once it is sturdy, you know that you can cut that bloom and it'll last for you in a vase about five to seven days. There is also a variety of zinnia called the Benary's Giant, and those have larger blooms, and they actually rival dahlias. They're such a beautiful bloom, and they come in also a multitude of colors. And then you'll also find some zinnias that are the cactus style zinnia. And those have petals that are a bit spiky and a little bit more loose and frilly, and they're also beautiful to grow. And lastly, if you don't wanna grow these three foot plants of zinnias, perhaps you're looking for something a little bit shorter to either use in a container, a window box, or even in the front of a border. There's a few varieties that I've tried and a new one that I will be, will be trying this year that I'll share with you as well. For shorter stature zinnias, there is the Profusion line. So I've tried the Profusion Double White Zinnia and the Profusion Double Deep Salmon Zinnia. And I grew these in my window boxes and they were absolutely beautiful. The blooms are only about two and inches. The plants themselves are 12 to 15 inches in height. So they are a perfect candidate for container gardening. And we all know that container plants can cost a lot of money, but you can get a pack of Zinnia seeds that will do quite a few containers or even a whole border for you. So this year I will be trying a new variety of short zinnia. It's about, I wanna say it's also a 12 to 15 inch height plant and a two inch bloom. And this variety is called Zinnia Zahara Double Raspberry. It almost looks like it has a pink and white striping effect. Another option for short zinnia. The next variety of flower that you can grow from seed that is really easy is the Cosmo. Cosmos are the quintessential cottage garden flower. They have a really pretty um, fern-like, very fine type foliage. And then they have these blooms that are very similar to say a daisy. And Cosmos also now come in single petals or double petals, and you can find varieties that are tall or short. Some of the ones that I've grown before are the, this one's from Baker Creek. This is the double Dutch rose. And it's a really pretty pink frilly double variety 
yeah, this one's called Double Dutch Rose Cosmo. And it's, it's beautiful. I actually have a little bit of footage from when I grew it last year, and I'll be growing this one again. These are really easy to grow from seed. Um, you just put, press them into the soil with a tiny bit of dirt on top, water them in, and in about five to seven days, maybe even less, depending on how warm your growing conditions are, you'll have your seeds start sprouting. Now, this one is a taller variety. It's about two foot. It says it gets to be about four foot tall. So it is a very tall variety. The thing with Cosmos is they can have a tendency to flop. So if you plant them very densely close together, the you know, if you plant your plants pretty close together, they will essentially hold each other up. So if you have a taller variety of Cosmo, you want to think about maybe planting the seeds a little bit closer together. Now, they, I've also grown a variety called Daydream, which is a really pretty pink and white variety. Um, also single petal, really pretty. I did grow this one in containers. It was not a good candidate for containers because this plant, again, is about three to four foot tall. Um, let me see if it says here. Yep, three to four uh, foot tall. And so anything that's about more than two foot tall, you probably want to stay away from planting in a container because with the wind, they will tend to flop and they just look kind of scraggly and leggy. But if you have a tall variety, they're great for borders cosmos if you're looking for short cosmos i actually have two varieties here that are a bit shorter one that i grew last year and one that i'll be growing this year the one that i grew last year is by burpee and it was called little princess now this one was a great candidate for a container because they stood pretty short let's see it says here that they are 18 to 24 inches in height which was great and the blooms were huge. They were a three to four inch bloom. So if you can find this variety, I highly recommend it. Cosmos Little Princess. And this year I'm growing Cosmos Sonata White. So Sonata is a very popular version of Cosmos. Sensation is another great variety of Cosmo, or another line of Cosmos. This one here says that it gets to be one and a half to two foot high and one foot wide. So again, you can plant these pretty densely to get a really pretty show. They bloom from late spring, early summer, through all the way to your hard frost. You can also cut these for bouquets and they do well in flower arrangements and look really beautiful with zinnias. If you're a new gardener and say you've even started vegetable gardening, here is a great companion plant that you can grow in your vegetable garden that will ward off pests like deer and rabbits because they don't like their fragrance, marigolds. So marigolds are a really easy beginner-friendly annual but also serve a great purpose in the garden to repel pests from your vegetables. Um, they are also a beautiful plant that comes in many different varieties and heights. You can buy petite marigolds, you can buy taller ones. There's also um, different color ranges that you can get, the most popular being the orange and yellow varieties. But as of recent, they've started to develop new colors. And there is one here that is um, an offshoot of the yellows and oranges. It's called Strawberry Blonde. Um, a friend actually shared these with me. Mary, if you're watching, thank you so much. I'm excited to try this variety in my garden this year. And I've also started um, liking these creamy white colored marigolds. And last year was the first year that I grew this variety called Kilimanjaro White. And this is by Baker Creek. While it's not a true white, it's a really beautiful creamy ivory color. And it has tinges of a buttery yellow. They're really beautiful. These are a little bit taller. These marigolds get to be, they have two inch flowers and they get to be, I want to say um, two to three feet in height. So these are also ones that you might want to plant densely so that they can kind of hold each other up. And um, yeah, so marigolds, really easy, beginner friendly. Nasturtiums. Now these are an edible flower, so you can grow them for culinary purposes, but they're also beautiful and a great alternative to say something like a petunia. I feel like nasturtiums look very similar to petunias. Now, one thing to note about nasturtiums is that they do not prefer a lot of heat. And so I find that when I do grow nasturtiums at some point throughout the summer, they peter out a little bit. And then as the temperatures cool off towards the end of the summer, they start to come in back to life and flush with a ton of, ton of blooms. I had this variety that I grew last year, the Baker Creek Nasturtium Tip Top Alaskan Salmon. It has a beautiful variegated foliage and this particular one has this salmon orange colored bloom with a yellow throat. Beautiful. These are so easy to grow from seed, basically foolproof. They also come in many different colors and they have a bit of a bushy trailing habit. So these would actually look beautiful tucked into a container kind of spilling over the edge. Great container plant. The good thing about these is that they transition beautifully into fall. They will look beautiful until you get a hard frost in the fall. 
great, great annual, easy, beginner friendly. On the topic of containers, another really beautiful plant that you can throw into your containers that will become a wonderful trailer and fill out the front is alyssum. Now alyssum, I mean, this is probably, along with zinnias, this is one of the other first flowers that I started from seed, so easy. Now these are tiny, tiny seeds. So all you have to do to grow alyssum is very lightly scatter them on the top of the soil, water them in, and in a few days they will start sprouting. Alyssum is also cold or cooler weather tolerant. So say you start these inside in grow lights. Anytime that you start anything indoors, you do have to acclimate them to outside temperatures. But once you get these outside, if you happen to get a little bit of cold or cooler weather, these are a lot more tolerant than any of the other varieties that we've talked about so far. But alyssum is a wonderful um, carpet or mound forming type annual with these tiny little flowers. You can get them in a variety of colors. My favorite tends to be the white. I do like to tuck them into containers. Um, I have some containers in my garden that I use with evergreens in, and then I will tuck some nasturtium and some alyssum underneath. I have them hanging out of window boxes. And the varieties that I've grown, my favorite to be honest is this white one from the Dollar Tree. It's called Carpet of Snow, and you can get four packs for a dollar, but all you need is one and in fact one might be enough for two seasons because these seeds are so tiny they give you quite a lot of plants I've also tried this variety by Fairy Morse, which is the pastel carpet mix. When I tried these, I was hoping that I would get a mix of like lavender and purple and white flowers, but most of them turned out to be white. Um, but you can also buy a variety called Royal Carpet, which is more on the purple side of things. And um, really beautiful, alyssum. This would make a really good filler or spiller in a container and really easy and inexpensive from seed. Sunflowers. Sunflowers are such a beautiful, happy cherry flower. I mean, what's not to love about them, right? Really easy to start from seed. One key thing to note about sunflowers is that they like to reach for the sun. So you want to place them somewhere in your garden where you will get to enjoy their pretty little faces. So if you have sun, um, you wanna put them in a position where they're going to face the sun, but also so that you get to enjoy them. Um, you don't wanna plant them by a fence and the sun's coming from your neighbor's house and now they're looking over your neighbor's yard and not at your not at you, right? You want to be able to enjoy them. So something to think about when you're thinking about where to plant your sunflowers. Now the varieties that I have here are some that I've tried before and some new ones that I'll be trying this year. Last year I grew a variety called Strawberry Blonde and Strawberry Blonde was absolutely beautiful. Now another thing about sunflowers is that you can get cut and come again varieties which means that they're branching. You'll be able to cut sunflowers and there's other um, branches that are coming off of that sunflower that are going to give you more blooms. But you can also have some varieties like the Pro Cut Plum that are just a single sunflower per seed. So similar to like tulips, which grow from bulbs, but you get one flower per bulb. That is the case with some varieties of sunflowers. Um, you also have to be careful about what size sunflower you plant because there are some mammoth varieties, literally they're called mammoth, but there's also some that are just really tall and that they can get upwards of eight, 10, 12 feet tall. And I accidentally grew a couple of those really big ones a few years back. And by the time that the season was done, that stalk was so thick and hard that I had to use a saw to cut it out of the garden. So you wanna kind of keep that in mind in terms of maintenance. You probably wanna start with a really easy run of the mill medium-sized sunflower if you're a beginner. The Autumn Beauty variety is gorgeous and you get a bunch of different sunset type colors. Some yellows and some oranges and a little bit of red. Beautiful. Now let's say that you are still only doing container growing. You maybe don't want to plant the things out in the garden. You want to stick to some containers. You want some options for containers. Now over recent years there have been many varieties of sunflowers developed that are container friendly. I have one here that I've actually grown before. These seeds I got from Burpee. I probably bought them at a box store like Home Depot or Lowe's. It is called Incredible. These were wonderful. I grew them in front of my driveway walls. They only got to be maxed out at about two feet tall. Yeah, it says here 20 inches in height and they had multiple seven to nine inch blooms. Gorgeous. They are multi-branching. So you get like this little bouquet of sunflowers out of one plant. These were really 
Incredible pun intended. So if you can find the Sunflower Incredible, this would be a great candidate for a container because they only get to be 20 inches tall and multi-branching. So beautiful Sunflower. And this year I'm going to try this variety, which is also considered a dwarf um, Sunflower and it's called Sunflower Dwarf Teddy Bear. It says that it gets um, three foot in height. So not quite as tall as the large varieties, but a little bit taller than the uh, Incredible. So the dwarf teddy bear. But what's pretty about this one is that it looks very similar to a marigold where it's got this very dense um, type bloom. Really pretty. So sunflowers, again, really easy, beginner friendly, beautiful bloom to grow. And they transition so well into fall. And a bonus or my number seven annual that is easy to grow from seed. I grew it for the first time last year and I am completely hooked is Gomfrina. Last year I grew the Atomic Purple Gomfrina from Baker Creek and this year I'm going to be trying the Snow White Gomfrina from Baker Creek as well. Now it was my first experience last year and so I looked at the instructions and I did exactly what it said which was to soak the seeds for 24 to 48 hours. I just did 24 hours and then I did um I actually went back and checked. I did try a couple of seeds through winter sowing and those didn't come up too well for me, but then I did do some direct sow and those worked wonderfully. I had a huge border across my front main walkway and they were absolutely stunning. These are really prolific bloomers, low fuss. Once they're established, they are just going to bloom nonstop for you. They're these also I found to be deer resistant. The deer in my garden did not touch these. So Gomfrina for my first attempt last year, I have to say was a really easy annual to grow from seed. All of the flowers that we looked at today are sun loving, warm weather annuals. With the exception of the nasturtium that could maybe take a little bit of a part sun, part shade situation, especially during the hottest part of the summer. And if you are a complete beginner at starting flowers from seed, I'm going to leave you with three additional tips that hopefully will ensure your success. Number one, when you're planting your seeds or sowing your seeds, sowing your seeds just means planting them, you want to make sure that you plant them to the proper depth. On the back of all of the seed packets, it will tell you how deep you should plant that seed. And in general, the bigger the seed, the deeper it gets planted, the smaller the seed, the less it needs to be stuck into the soil. So if you have a seed, for example, like a sunflower seed, they tend to be a little bit larger. Those you need to press into the soil anywhere from about a quarter inch to a half an inch. Cover it back up with soil and mist it with some water and let it do its thing. But some seed packets that you'll read will say something like, needs light to germinate. Some examples of some really small seeds that generally just need to be scattered on the top of the soil are things like alyssum that we talked about earlier. Those are really tiny seeds. So just scattering them on the soil, misting them with some water is enough to get them going. Tip number two, you don't want to overwater or underwater your seedlings. So when you're first starting your seeds, they do need consistent moisture in order to germinate. So you want to make sure that you have consistently moist soil throughout the germination process. Once your seedlings germinate, you want to make sure that you provide them with enough water to keep them happy, but not too much where they can risk rotting and dying off from something called dampening off. So just the right amount of water is going to be a really important component. And light, number three light conditions have to be appropriate. Now, if you don't have an indoor seed starting setup with grow lights, um, you might want to grow them in a south facing window. And while in general, a really bright, sunny south facing window provides enough light and warmth to germinate your seeds, it might not be enough to keep them growing happily. Um, you might end up with something called leggy seedlings. And leggy seedlings are some seedlings that are really tall and skinny because they are reaching for light. So in order to avoid leggy seedlings, you need nice strong light. If you want to grow them in the window, you can. You just have to remember to every day rotate them, therefore giving it more light in all directions. So that can help. But also if you can't start them indoors or you don't have a really good sunny south facing window, you can always try the winter sowing method, which we discussed earlier, where you can put them outside, and um, in a recycled container in a mini greenhouse and they will grow out there for you. A final tip is you want to 
encourage more branching or a bushier plant from things like cosmos and zinnias. So pinching will help the plant um, produce more side shoots. So what you do is you essentially pinch off top growth once your seedling gets to be anywhere from, you know, six to eight inches tall and has three or four sets of leaves. You want to go ahead and pinch off that top growth. And what that will do was encourage your seedling or your plant to push out side shoots and therefore giving you more blooms. Annual flowers are a great option for many different scenarios. Maybe you want to grow a cut flower garden so that you can enjoy beautiful bouquets all season long. Maybe you have a new garden that you're trying to establish that have, has a lot of blank space and maybe you can grow some annuals in your flower beds to fill in those gaps while your garden matures. Or maybe you just wanna save a little bit of money and do some containers from seed this year. Whatever the reason, growing annual flowers are a great option. Thanks for spending your time with me and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the thumbs up button and please consider subscribing so you don't miss any of my future videos and we'll see you soon.